I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief of EE Times. Join us for this special View from Sea Level interview with TSMC Founding Chairman Morris Chang, who gave the keynote at the 2007 ISSCC in San Francisco. So, Morris, recently uh, we've seen the news come out of TI that they're pretty much going to bag process development at 32 nanometers, um, too expensive for them. And we've also seen uh, the Kroll 2 Process Development Alliance um, sort of staggered a bit by some players uh, uh, not renewing their, their participation there. Um, that seems to signal the process development shift is coming entirely now onto the shoulders of, of the foundry business. Um, it's been edging there, but now it's going to be pretty much entirely on your shoulders. That, that puts a lot of pressure on your, on your business model, does it not? A lot of uh, pressure, uh, a lot of opportunity. Uh, uh, I see the opportunity before the pressure, uh, frankly. <laughs> um, uh, yes, uh, I think uh, several things are going on. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, almost all of them uh, during my talk. Uh, the the R&D costs uh, of each node is getting to be uh, pretty expensive. And um, the uh, cost of building a wafer fab uh, is um, getting to be pretty high. Now, there is uh, another uh, thing that's also significant uh, that I did not mention in my talk because I thought that uh, the talk couldn't uh, encompass everything uh, that's happening in in this competitive battle. Uh, that is that um, companies like TI and uh, Freescale, et cetera, that are thinking of stopping their process development uh, and uh, stop building their fabs, are doing so uh, with some I wouldn't say assurance, but with some comfort that, uh, that their fate is not entirely in one foundry's hand. They think that there will be competition. And uh, they don't think that by stopping process development and stopping building fabs that they will be handling their fate to one company. Um, they think they'll be able to pick and choose. Uh, uh, now, that, of course, uh, is an indication of the coming of age of the foundry industry, that uh, there's uh, more competition now. Uh, so I think uh, uh, that's uh, certainly uh, uh, a factor in, in the decision of a company like TI. And it's, it's not going to really happen for a few years yet. Uh, TI is not going to do that un, uh, until uh, the 32 nanometer generation. I mean, 45, they are almost uh, done already. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're gonna, they, have, they are continuing their development uh, with their own effort uh, until the 45. Um, so it's not going to happen for another four or five years, really. Uh, uh, no. And by then, uh, I think their belief is that uh, uh, the field will get even more competitive. Now, here, you know, we may have uh, different ideas. You know? I mean, I, I have a feeling that uh, the field is just as likely to consolidate uh, as it is to become more uh, diverse. With, among IC vendors or foundries? Among or uh, foundry, among foundry vendors, yeah. Uh, I think that um, uh, I think so far I think uh, the uh, tendency was to uh, become more diverse, uh, more more and more vendors, more and more foundries. Uh, but um, I think that uh, in the in the future, uh, uh, the past trend doesn't have to continue. Right? right. In the future, I think we could, in fact, go the consolidating role. Let me try to connect a couple of dots. You mentioned in your speech that you're looking at uh, 
some segments that you'd like to expand your business into, one of them being microprocessors. Now, we saw Texas Instruments um, get out of the process development business in the, in the future. Uh, could there be a time in which a microprocessor vendor like Intel or AMD uh, goes that route instead and passes that responsibility on to a TSMC, for instance? Uh, maybe, I, I don't know what the definite point in time is. I don't know when it will happen exactly. But uh, I, don't, I don't see that um, it will be an exception. I, I think it will happen, uh, just like uh, every other product. Um, um, now, uh, I, I, I think that I, I should, uh, let's get back to this um, business of uh, a lot of uh, IDMs going fab light now. Mm -hmm. And I, I said that one of the reasons they're doing so is because um, uh, they think that um, there'll be um, uh, more foundries that they can pick and choose from. Um, uh, but there's another uh, reason I think that um, uh, they, they think that uh, that uh, technology has become relatively less important in the differentiation of uh, of their product. They think they think that uh, design will be architecture and design will be more relatively more important. Let's talk a little bit about. China and your relationship with China. There's a there's a growing foundry business there. You have some relationships there. Um, it seems to me you're you're a little bit handicapped in in some of the processes that you can deliver there. How do you see that evolving um, over the next couple of years? Oh, I have no doubt that um, it will be a big market for foundries. There. Uh, Design houses, their fabulous companies, are growing very fast. Um, still in a pretty chaotic state. I think they have uh, four or five hundred fabulous companies. As I recall, the average revenue for these four or five hundred was about one million dollars. Pretty small. Pretty small. Uh, but um, the chaos certainly um, also means um, dynamism. I mean, it's, uh, they, they, they are growing pretty fast. I think my million-dollar average uh, is ob obsolete already. I think. I think. It, I think uh, it was two years ago. I think. By now, I think um, uh, the average is higher now. Um, very dynamic market. Um, you do need to be there. Uh, the foundry needs to be there in order to participate fully in the opportunity. We are there, but as you pointed out, uh, we are limited by the technology we can use. So that's uh, indeed a uh, handicap. Mm -hmm. 